at one of Lorna Goodison's poem, Mother the Great Stone Got to Move. I trust that you will enjoy this presentation. If you find this presentation beneficial, remember to like, share, tell a friend, and subscribe. God bless you. of the metaphoric meaning of the title. Two, to make students aware of the figurative or poetic devices embedded in this poem. Three, to make students aware of the themes explored in this poem so that they may be able to know the poems that it can be compared with. And last, but definitely by no means least, to develop an understanding of the various messages embedded in this poem as they relate to the themes. I trust that you'll find this presentation beneficial. poem is very significant as it gives readers a vivid picture of gigantic huge stones that may be blocking the persona. These great stones are symbolic of the obstacles or hurdles or challenges that the persona or people in general face throughout their course or journey in life. The fact that the title says that these great stones got to move indicates that the person is somewhat frustrated by them and wants their eradication. These stones are somewhat symbolic of oppression or suppression or a period of great cruelty. Were you getting that from the title? You know that song, Mother the Great Stones got to move, got to move. Mother the Great Stones got to move. All right. So we're seeing, you know, that root, that, uh, um, should I say, Africanized, authentic, black root. So we can just imagine the great suppression, oppression that these stones would have symbolized. got to move. Stanza 1. Mother, what stone is wedged across the hole in our history and sealed with blood wax? In this hole is our side of the story. Exact figures, head counts, burial artifacts, documents, lists, maps, showing our way up, up through the stars, lockets of brass, containing all textures of air clippings. It is the half that has never been told. Some of us must tell it. Poem, the first stanza of the poem, Mother, the Great Stone Got to Move. In this stanza, we get the impression that the stone referred to here is that of a suppressed or untold history or ancestry. 
The hold is used literally and metaphorically to indicate that the history is buried or hidden under a gigantic rock because of the explosive nature or damage that may be caused if this history is revealed. Thus, it is sealed with blood wax. This hole contains a wealth of knowledge or information, a past cruelty. Herein lies the persona's history or lineage. However, this heritage is undeniably obvious in the texture of the hair. Consequently, the phrase containing all texture of hair clippings is important or significant as it relates to a period of colonization where the domestic slaves were sexually assaulted or exploited by the white planters, and this grotesque or gruesome act would have produced an undeniably molotov child having air textures that were quite different from their black counterparts. This hold, right, also contains head counts, burial artifacts, documents, lists, maps of those persons who were of course slain during that period of colonization. Many of us don't know no, the, the the number of persons who were killed, lynched, okay, as a result of the stance that they had taken against slavery, against oppression, against any form of inequality, right? And so the half has never yet been told, right? But some of us must tell it. Those persons who who um who are grand grandfathers, great-grandfathers uh, of, of slaves must tell this history. And that's what the writer is imploring, that persons, some of us, must tell it. The poem, Mother, the Great Stone. Mother, there is the stone on the hearts of some women and men, something like an onyx cabochon cut, which hung on the wearer's seeds, bad dreams, speaking for the small, dreamers of the earth, plagued by nightmares, yearning for healing dreams, we want the stone to move. Mother the Great Stone, the stone referred to here is symbolic of unfulfilled dreams or aspirations due to past cruelty that have plagued generations, causing them to have nightmares instead of healing dreams. The stone on the hearts of some men and women, these gemstones which have a cabazon cut, cannot suffice or make up for all the hurts that these women may have encountered. Hence, they hung on the wearer's seeds, thus causing bad dreams. When Goodison says, speaking for the small dreamers of the earth, we get the impression that she's advocating for the downtrodden, weaker, inferior, or minority group who longs or yearns for healing dreams, whereby they can feel a sense of accomplishment. She indirectly suggests that she wants that stone that has caused them to feel unfulfilled move. Goodison, who is a feminist, is advocating for women who have suffered cruelly at the hands of these heartless people. Gemstones are said to contain healing properties. Have you ever worn a gemstone? All right, see the picture there of gemstones. All right, have you ever worn a gemstone or, or on onyx? Well, it says they can increase or boost your energy, all right, clean your space and attract wealth. Enhance your intuition and increase your mental abilities. 
And they say here also that they can bring abundance and even attract love. Do you believe this? All right, let me know in the comment section below. Are you familiar with gemstones? Do you have a gemstone? Okay, and what does it symbolize? All right, we know that some of them have spiritual meanings. Okay, right, and so on. All right, do you believe that gemstones have healing properties? Let me know. mother when one year is making way for another in a ceremony attended by a show of silver stars mother see the moon milk fed herself a nursing mother and we think of our children and the stones upon their future and we want these stones to move that the person is somewhat concerned about the future generation. Hence, there is somewhat of an urgent plea for these stones of oppression, suppression, or inequality be removed so that the future generation can progress. The first and second lines of this stanza imply that a new year is approaching or dawning. A watch night scenery is presented here. Are you getting that feel? And during this period of introspection, people tend to make resolutions. Isn't that so? Good son feels that it is no time that these stones that are symbolic of colonialism be moved so that there is a discontinuation of the bad dreams which have plagued past mothers and will plague future mothers if these issues go unresolved or unaddressed. Are you getting that? And you notice she's not selfish, right? So she's writing on behalf of these women, okay, right? And we and we think of our children and the stones upon their future, right? And we want these stones to move. My mother, the great stones got to move. And it reads, For the year going out came in fat at first, but towards the harvest it grew lean, and many mouth corners gathered white, and another kind of poison, powdered white, was brought in to replace what was green, and death sells it with one hand. Let us examine this stanza and see what we can get from it. Goodison paints a grim picture of the Caribbean region post-colonization. The first and second lines use contrasting images to indicate the change from a lush and resourceful period to a barren and scarce one, which resulted in hunger and deprivation for the lower class. This is confirmed in the lines many mouth corners gathered white. This image paints a vivid picture of the famine that was taking place metaphorically amongst the poor and powerless groups, causing them to turn to the lucrative and illicit drug trade. Another kind of poison was brought to replace what was green, which metaphorically dead cells with one hand. Death is personified here to suggest that all who indulge in this would eventually die, literally and metaphorically. The person who sells it is Mr. or Mrs. Death, as he or she is selling a product that is deadly or harmful. 
thus implying that the drug trade had adverse effect on the Caribbean region. At first, you know, they got money from it. You were able to expand. You were able to do all that you need to do, right? But at the end of it, but towards the harvest, it grew lean. Those who take, took part in it, those who indulge, those who um, bought the products, of course, they, of course, receive the debt as their reward. Debt palms are gone. Then debt gives debt picture in the papers asking, where does all this debt come from? Mother, stones are pillars for the homeless sleep on concrete sheets. Stone favors soap. Stone is no meat. The hard hearted giving our children stones to eat. You understand this stanza? Okay, let's see if you did. All right. Now, this stanza is very interesting, right? Very good. In this stanza, Lorna Goodison looks at the repercussion of the drug trade on the Caribbean and the most vulnerable groups. We see the introduction of criminality and violence, and with the other dead palms are gone, right? We also see the double standard and hypocrisy of the powerful sector or members of society. Then debt gets debt's picture, you know, the advertisation of the of of crime and and all of those things are reported in the newspaper. Right, and if there are crime and, and violence happening, of course, it may meet the, the headline, or of course, right, good. And so then debt gets debt's picture asking, Where does all this debt come from? This question asks, it is asked in a rather sarcastic tone to imply that the person asking is in fact responsible for the mayhem or the debt cause. The unconcern for the poor is further extended in the mess images for the homeless sleep on concrete sheets, right? And you know that somebody, but I think it was. Red rat to say street side of me base base you know I have no other place place right all right so the unconcern for the poor is further extended in the images for the poor sleep on concrete sheets and the hard hearted giving our children stones to eat. Now we know that you cannot eat stone, right? So the mere fact that this suggested that the people are not, the powerful are not concerned about the powerless. All right? And so these stones have got to move. Mother, the great stone got to move six stanza. Mother, the great stones over mankind got to move. It's been 10,000 years we have been watching them now from various points in the universe. From the time of our birth as, as points of light into the eternal coil workings of the cosmos. Roll away stone of poison powders come to blot out the hope of the young. Move stone of sacrificial lives we breed to feed to the tribalistic economic machines. From across the pathway to Mount Morning, site of Rose Quart Fountain, brimming anise and star water, bright fragrance for our children's future. Mother, these great stones got to move. This stanza, the 
fifth stanza fifth and final stanza we can hear the frustration in the persona's voice this frustration is further emphasized in the use of the hyperbole it's been ten thousand years now we have been watching them Goodison's, Goodison's use of the inclusive and exclusive languages conveyed in the we, the pronouns we and them, re respectively, paints a picture, a clear picture of the segregation that existed between the classes, which is represented by the powerless and the powerful. She believes that the colonial, colonialism had resulted in superior snobbish attitudes from the time of our birth as points of light. This line indicates that, the white, that white supremacy was viewed as ideal. Thus, they were seen as the light while the blacks were viewed as the minority group. Consequently, the blacks were denied an opportunity to express themselves. Their identity, as their identity, was somewhat shaped by the colonizer's ideals. Are you getting that? You can agree or disagree. <laughs> Share your comments in the comment section below. or aspirations because of one's involvement in drug trade. She speaks also of the laborious work that the lower class perform in order to satisfy the unquenchable appetite of the powerful. Move stone of sacrificial lives we breed to feed to tribalistic economic machines thus painting a grim picture of industrialization. Again, she expresses a genuine concern for the future generation and wants the best for them. Brimming anise and star water and bright fragrant for our children's future. It is this desire for a bright future for the next generation that has caused her to demand that these stones be moved. Do you understand the poem now? Let me know in the comment section below. Devices, the figurative devices used in this poem are as follows. Alliteration, allusion, assonance, metaphor, paradox, personification, pun, repetition, rhetorical question. Can you identify an example of each of these devices used in the poem? Are you able to do so? If you are, please share your response in the comment section below. and its impact on the vulnerable. Two, attitude to power and authority. Three, attitude to the past. Freedom versus restriction. The powerful versus the powerless. And any other theme that your teacher and you would have discussed. Remember to read over the poem, look at the analyst given, and also pay close attention to the figurative devices that are embedded in this poem. I trust that you have found this presentation beneficial. May God bless you. All the best in your examination. Remember that if you have found this presentation beneficial, remember to like, share, tell a friend, and subscribe. God bless you.